And welcome back, everybody, to another episode of MLB DFS Quick Hits, your Thursday, April 29th edition. Should have a quick one for you. Four-game early, five-game main slate. We'll talk about both, but much more on the main slate, of course. But I hope everybody had a great uh, Wednesday. It was a wild one. Braves went bananas. Rizzo struck uh, Freeman out. That was fun. We had some great pitching. Cy- Siler Glasnow was outstanding. We had the late, uh, or not late, like two, five minutes before lock of the White Sox game got postponed by rain, and then the DraftKings debacle that followed, that was entertaining. Had some late scratches in the Padres game that, that they did not let you get out of, so there's just all kinds of chaos going on. You had Alex Wood pitching well. Um, good stuff all around. Herman got it done. Yankees showed some power. Um, to the Nationals took it to Steven Matz, so lots of fun stuff. Should be a good night for the quick hits crowd for the most part. If you're on the right plays that we talked about quite a bit, like Mike Ford value, that's what the Slack chats for lineups came out. We made some pivots. The Rowdy Telez news was just dreadful, but that's what we chatted up there. Have some fun in the Slack chat and get you going. If you want to get in the Slack chat, it's free. Just give me your email. We'll chat it up. And there are a lot of good people in there. It keeps growing. It's great to have such a strong community all rooting for each other to make some green screens. Uh, you can check me out on Twitter at BDentric. You can check out the podcast at MLB DFS Quick Hits on all of your podcasting platforms. But if you can give a rating review on iTunes, we'd much appreciate it. That uh, is what moves the needle to help get more people to find the podcast. And if uh, you can do that little thing, it'll help me out a lot. So I appreciate that. And if you'd rather watch the podcast, go to Roto- the Roto Baller YouTube channel. You can watch it there. Subscribe, like, share all the goodies over at the Roto Baller YouTube channel to get you taken care of. But let's get at it. We'll start with the four game early slate. We're limited on totals. Um, I got three totals out of the four earlies. We have Yankees, Orioles, total of nine and a half. A's, Rays, total of eight. Phillies, Cardinals, total of seven. Uh, beware of the potential rain in Philadelphia, I believe. That one looks pretty rough, but um, that's like the only main weather spot. Slight chances in Chicago, but mainly that Philadelphia-St. Louis game could be some some wet weather, so keep an eye on that. And, you know, that's the high-priced arm is Aaron Nola, 10000 at St. Louis. I, I'm all over Aaron Nola if he cracks the uh, – if he cracks the the build with um, with no rain, I'd be all over Aaron Nola. You got a St. Louis Cardinals team that's very hit and miss at the plate. We saw them uh, get it done a little bit on Wednesday, but not a ton. They strike out over 26% of the time versus uh, right-handed pitch with an 85 WRC+. plus. So Nola should be able to do his thing at 10,000. I like that quite a bit. Uh, Bassett's an interesting pivot. He just doesn't have a big ceiling that I'm running to go play, but a lot of guys don't on this slate. So that's just the, the long and short of it. But Nola... I'm on board with in a big, big way. Jordan Montgomery at 88. You can take a look at Domingo Herman shut down Baltimore on Wednesday. Now you got the lefty Montgomery going out there with, against a Baltimore team that strikes out over 27% of the time versus left-handed pitching. They have a 258 average, but a 100 WRC plus their average in the power department versus lefties. Uh, the strikeout rate's tremendous. Could help Montgomery out a ton at 8,800 bucks. I don't mind stacking some Orioles against Jomo. But uh, he's a very intriguing player. Like, he got hit around his last time against Cleveland. Time before that looked great. Or he gave it four runs in each of his starts before that, but he got strikeouts, so kind of offset things. And then he was great against Baltimore to start the year. Six shutout innings, four hits, seven Ks, no walks for 29 points. So he's been very, very hit and miss. It's an ugly slate, so take that strikeout upside. Go with some Jomo in that one. Other than that, you can kind of look at Kim. You can look at Kikuchi versus Garcia. But Kikuchi hasn't been great. Um, Shane McClanahan is going to make the spot start for Tampa Bay against Oakland. I do like McClanahan. If we can keep an eye on any reports about um, how stretched out he's going to be and all that good stuff. We've seen him go about three innings. They say he stretched out to go five or six. We'll see. Look for more reports on that, but $5,500 for McClanahan, the lefty, hard throwing lefty for Tampa Bay. The prospect getting the call up from the alt site to make the spot start. So if we get some news on, you know, if he can go five or so innings at 5500 against the Oakland Athletics. I could jump on board with that. The A strike out nearly 24% of the time versus lefties. Do have a 198 ISO and a 115 WRC plus. So some pop versus a lefty, but no problem going that direction. Now, if you're looking at the bats on this four game early slate, Yankees versus Jorge Lopez is a phenomenal play yet again. Like you're just going to stack your Yankees par for the course type stuff. Houston will be popular versus Kikuchi. We know we like Guriel. Remember though, day game, getaway day. All that kind of stuff. So you get some interesting lineups. Like, is Higgy still catching, or does Sanchez get today because Higgy's caught the last two days? Um, those kind of situations with uh, the Yankees. But Houston versus Kikuchi, very very intriguing. Yankees will be the top stack. Um, I don't mind Philadelphia versus Kim, but Harper took one in the face, a ninety-seven mile fastball to the face on Wednesday night. 
he might be out of the lineup. So keep that in mind there. Could be interesting. But uh, Philly, because Kim's a big pitch to contact guy. So that that's in play. Baltimore's in play as well. So keep an eye on those. It's pretty much Houston and New York's going to be your, your popular ones. And then we try to get different elsewhere. And your main pitchers are Nola, Jomo, and I think McClanahan's where I'm going so far. But I'm telling you, I'm going to tread lightly on these two Thursday slates. They're kind of messy. Nothing great. You have like one main arm and then like these are FanDuel slates to tell you the truth. You just pitch one pitcher, get all the bats you want, go have some fun. But on DraftKings here, you can make it work. Just take it easy. Enjoy a little fun. You got PGA starting on Thursday. If you if you if you're listening to the podcast before PGA tees off, the always pressing PGA DFS podcast to get you started there for the Valspar Championship. And then we got the NFL draft Thursday night. So enjoy that as well. All right, five game main slate on tap for you. We only got two totals so far, partly because the last West Coast games are wrapping up here as we record, but uh, and some pitching changes. It's a mess. But Boston at Texas over under eight and a half. Rockies Diamondbacks total of nine. So it has nothing to do with the late games because Rockies Diamondbacks are still playing, and we have totals on that game. So it's all pitching related. Um, Dodgers at Milwaukee. You have Trevor Bauer eleven three. He's your high price pitcher. And it's a phenomenal one. Like you're going to use Trevor Bauer unless you want to be super contrarian because Milwaukee striking out um, over 28% of the time for right handed pitching. You saw Sandy Alcantara get it done on Wednesday. He gave up a couple of runs. He gave a home run to Colton Wong. But other than that, went seven strong, just dealing. Lots of strikeouts in that Milwaukee lineup, as we know. 209 average, 148 ISO, 81 WRC+. Plus. Um, Bauer could get – they could run into a few on him, but – you know, Bauer's good for most likely six for sure, if not seven plus innings. That's just what Bauer does. Yeah, he's got at least six in every start. Um, he's thrown um, 98 pitches or more in pretty much every start. And he's got you 23 or more, if not 27 or more in four or five starts. The dude is just lights out on a slate of this magnitude and cash. You play him in GVPs if you want to get contrarian, sure. Um, I think what I might do is make one cash lineup with, with Bauer and company and then make just one GPP Brewer stack. But I, in, a, in a very low in, low price point situation because I, I like Bauer too much in this spot, especially they should be heavy favorites on the road against Lauer. Uh, the Dodger bats should be popular and they're expensive, but Bauer's a phenomenal play. Keep an eye on the Detroit-Chicago pitching situation because right now they got Boyd versus Cease. Maybe we get the uh, Rodon start, and if it's the Rodon start, we're all, all about it because we talked about the lefties versus Detroit, the, the massive 34% K rate. Uh, the, the WRC plus that's like I could probably do it. In my slow pitch W, my slow pitch softball WRC plus tr- like just triumphs over their team WRC plus. So uh, if Rodon's in, we're good to go there uh, and keep an eye on that. But otherwise, it's Cease versus Boyd. And if you want to play them in GPPs, you could Cease is seventy four hundred bucks. Don't hate it, Boyd. He's been sneaky good this year. Not a massive ceiling, but a decent floor. Chicago striking about twenty two percent of the time. First left-handed pitching, which yeah, Chicago crushes lefties. That's the problem. 286 average, 162 ISO, 130 WRC plus. It's one of the like the second best WRC plus in all baseball. First lefty, so it's hard to like Boyd. Is he finally going to regress? Is it finally coming back to the mean here with Matt Boyd, or do we get another Boyd Boyd start? He's done it against Kansas City, Oakland, Houston, Minnesota, Cleveland. A couple decent teams, but he's put up 18 or more in every single start. Um, it, it's an intriguing situation here, but. I think I like the Chicago White Sox bats on this side of things, but Boyd's there. I mentioned Dylan Cease at 74 because Detroit's just bad. I, I hope it's Rodon. I really, really do. I want to play Rodon. Rodon will be a great pivot off of Trevor Bauer if you want to be a little different because Bauer's going to be so popular, or he'll be, or Rodon will be popular and makes Bauer lower owned. Another thing to t- for the, the Slack chat later to discuss stuff like that on Thursday afternoon. But um, we're looking at Detroit versus right-handed pitching. We talked about how they strike out 34% of the time versus lefties. They still strike out 27%, the 215 average, and an 89 WRC+. plus. So you can still take advantage of Detroit. Cease is just super wild, super inconsistent, but 7400 bucks is interesting. Um, Bryce Wilson is going to open for Atlanta, most likely followed by Kyle Wright, but that's still up in the air. So keep an eye on that between Chicago and Atlanta. This is why there's not a lot of totals. There's a lot of moving parts on this slate, and we're not going to get a lot of answers for a while. So you got you got that to worry about in their matchup, but for Chicago on the mound there, you have Ad, Adbert Alzale, and this is pretty interesting because we've seen the Braves bats have woke up. They took Hendricks to Pound Town, which we talked about, but you got Alzale who throws much harder, a lot more movement on his pitches, lots of strikeout upside. Went four and two thirds, five and a third, five all against Milwaukee though, big strikeout team. So keep that in mind. But six or more Ks and two straight starts against Milwaukee. 
and then and you got this Braves team that, that is heating up. No, no hiding that whatsoever. But they still strike out twenty three percent of the time versus right handed pitching. If you want to go Alzale to be contrarian, you could. Cause I think the Braves will be popular after you know just looking so good the last couple nights. Alzale at seventy two is a very intriguing play. Uh, I think the popular punt play is going to be Kyle Gibson. Kyle Gibson's at home against the Boston Red Sox. Gibson's been great. The pitch mix change has been phenomenal. He's got uh, basically 17 or more points in three straight starts. He got blown up against Kansas City, but then Toronto at Tampa, Baltimore at Chicago. He's been absolutely electric. Five or more Ks in three or four starts. Six innings or more in every single one of those four starts. And then you go up against this Boston team that strikes out 24.5% of the time versus righties. 272 average isn't bad. 174 ISO, 119 WRC plus. So they hit righties very well, but they also strike out a decent amount versus righties. So Gibson at 7K, I think the uh, probably the odds on favorite punt play. But let's see how things if if Rodon and company come in and, and different situations there. But for now, Bauer's the top play by far. Cross our fingers for Rodon. But Bauer's the top play by far. I think Dylan Cease was an interesting GPP play if Rodon's not pitching. Albert Alzale is a phenomenal GPP play, and Kyle Gibson is going to be a very popular GPP. Like if, if Gibson's popular, we're not playing him. Keep that in mind. It's not happening. The one other pivot I will make, and this is only because it's a five-game, just nasty, nasty slate. Like I want to stack the Texas Rangers. We're going to talk about them as we talk about position by position like we usually do. I want to stack Texas, but at the same time, on a slate of this magnitude, you have Texas who's striking out over 24% of the time versus left-handed pitching with an 85 WRC+. Plus. You could look at a Martin Perez if you need to get super wacky. Like if you just want to punt the farm, you could look at Martin Perez. Um, since Senzatella is interesting too, depending on the Arizona lineup, I think Martin Perez at 57 is where I'd go. So it's Bauer Rodon, hopefully, but Bauer for sure. You got Alzale, I think it's a great GPP at 72. Cease will be in play if he's starting. Gibson's popular, but if for some reason he's not as chalky, becomes in play. And I think Perez and Senzatella, see what lineups come out. Could be quite so. Like I kind of went over most pitchers, but there's scenarios like built in for each one. Like literally on these smaller slates, ownership. I I usually don't care too much about ownership on big slates because it all kind of evens out between the bats and this that. This one, like if I already know I'm gonna take the chalky Bauer, I'm gonna play ownership with this pitching probably because you're gonna want either Dodger bats, White Sox bats if it's Boyd. Um, most likely gonna want either Texas bats, maybe Arizona bats. I think Boston, if Texas is chalk, if Gibson's chalk, I'm definitely taking Boston bats. So speaking of bats, I've talked enough about this. Let's talk about position by position bats. Let's go to the catcher's position on this slate. You know, you got Wilson Contreras always in play, but uh, Carson Kelly's up to 47 hundo. He's in play, but that, that's getting a little steep, a little steep for the liking here. A lot of the catchers are priced up. This is a, a new DraftKings. Yeah, of course it is. They screwed us on, on Wednesday night. Why not uh, change up your algorithm and actually price guys regularly? So you might have to pay up for catchers like Dom Nunez is there. Will Smith's a great play at forty three hundred bucks versus Eric Lauer. Forty three hundred bucks for Will Smith against Lauer is outstanding. Big fan of that. Um, Lamar Narvaez versus Bauer if you want to be contrarian at four K. Then Jose Trevino or Haim of uh, Texas will be your guy at thirty three and thirty one respectively if you want some value. First base position, Freeman went deep before he struck out against Rizzo, but he went deep uh, on Wednesday. He's not a bad look against Alzale, of course. But if you want to save some cash, your mean Mercedes, Jose Abreu, both hit lefties well. 4800 bucks, 4600 versus Boyd. That's quite intriguing, actually, in their situations because I want to target Boyd if I can. So you can pick Abreu or Mercedes, depending on how you want to stack it up, what money you have left over type situations. Uh, Nate Lowe at 41 if you're stacking up against Perez. All about that kind of life. So you can definitely look that direction. Um, going down cheaper, though, Paven Smith, first base out for the eligible, probably leading off for Arizona. He's 39 versus Sensatella. Definitely don't mind uh, the Sensatella route. But again, if, if Gibson's chalky, you got Bobby Dahlbeck at 34. Can definitely go that route to save some cash. Watch the Arizona lineups. Lots of injuries right now. So maybe with, um, Matheson cracks the lineup. He had a bomb on Wednesday. He's first base, third base at 3,000. That could be a guy to look at. Matt Duffy was hitting third or cleanup or something on Wednesday. He's 2,400. He's first base, third base. You're going to need some value if you're going to go get the Bowers and companies of the world. So just kind of see what lineups come out and see where you can kind of mix and match and get some goodies along those lines. Second base position now. You got Ryan McMahon. Great spot here versus Luke Weaver. I like Colorado a lot. I know it's the rocky road. They struggle on the road. I don't like Weaver at all. So 5100 bucks for McMahon. I'm in, I'm in play on. Albies is heating up at 49 If you are stacking Atlanta, Albies has been hitting cleanup with deep again on Wednesday. 
Nick Solak at 46. Love what he's doing at the dish, too. So the top three second basemen, price-wise, are all phenomenal plays. I think just basically whatever you're stacking, you're stacking with one of those guys. That's kind of how I lean out the gate. Uh, Garrett Hampson at 4200 bucks, Second base, Alpha eligible against Weaver, especially if he's leading off. He's in play. Again, if you're fading Bauer, Colton Wong leading off at 39. I like he's hit a couple bombs since returning from the IL, still on a bag or two. So you can definitely uh, look those directions with Colton Wong at 3,900. Um, cheaper down, though, like, you know, Nick Madrigal at 31, maybe more cash game. Nico Horner's at 3K. DK trying to put some respect on that name, which I appreciate. So you got a couple cheapies you can look at there at the second base position. Uh, third base, you got Devers at 52. Really good look versus Gibson. I, I, the more I think about it, I'm hoping Gibson's chalky. I really am because it just justifies a, a leverage stack even more, and at least it's a good team. Usually when we leverage stack, it's like a, a bad, mediocre team. To get to use Boston, that's pretty juicy. Pretty, pretty juicy. We got like Justin Turner loves hitting lefties. He's 5K versus Lauer. We're going to just pound Lauer as much as we can. So I like that. Chris Bryant at 47 is an interesting tournament play with Bryce Wilson opening and most likely Kyle Wright following. So that could be a nice 4700 bucks. If Dylan Cease is on the mound, Candelario at 39 is a nice price for Detroit. Good savings. They're like, if it is Cease, I got no problem stacking a cheap Detroit stack to save some cash. Uh, Austin Ryan, they keep talking about how, how much power he's got, and he's ready to break out. He went deep again on Wednesday. He's hitting sixth in that Braves lineup. He's 3,200. Nice, cheaper piece of Hot Lanta. So keep him in mind. David Boat's been swinging in a good spot in the order. He's 2,900 for some savings if you need that. And then other than that, I think that rounds out third base. Shortstop position, you got Bogarts at 55. Great. Tim Anderson at 51. Phenomenal. Top price guys are, are ready to rock and roll as usual. Corey Seager, lefty, lefty at 48. Don't mind that at all. Hopefully that lowers the ownership. Dancy Swanson at 36. I'm going to keep pounding that drum. I know he, he sucked it up on Wednesday. He's like the only piece of the Brave stack that didn't do anything. But hitting fifth, his overall X stats and everything points to just positive regression coming his way. So playing while he's cheap, Swanson at 36. I'll keep plugging him in. Maybe not on Thursday because I'm not making a ton of lineups. But when I'm making, you know, four, five, six lineups, whatever, Swanson's going to be in a few of them for sure. Uh, Horner at 3K, talked about him. Nick Ahmed, if you're looking for a cheap shortstop at 2,900, not the worst play you can make. I believe he had an RBI double on Wednesday night, so he's another guy you can look at. Head to the outfield, you got Acuna at 58, definitely in play. JD, uh, don't mind those at all. But like David Peralta's at the 5K. No one's going to pay 5K for David Peralta. That makes David Peralta a lot more interesting, folks. That's just the kind of way I look at things, on, especially on small slates. You can still get very good players at an interesting price point, hitting 338 over his last 10 games, averaging 11 points over his last 10 games. Keep him in mind. Um, similar to the Swanson is going to break out soon thing. We said that about Ozuna, and Ozuna had a big, big Wednesday. He went deep. He's 49 versus Alzale, so he's on the board. Alex Verdugo, hopefully back for Boston. He's 4,600 like that quite a bit. I'm a big Verdugo fan. I like him. He's a little cheaper, but I like him. Akil Badu has been slumping tremendously, so keep an eye on him. Even at the day off on Wednesday, they left him out of the lineup. Really, he wasn't going against Rodon. He was going to be out, which made sense, lefty-lefty. But if Dylan Cease is there, you know, Badu's been struggling, like I said, but 4,100, if you want to get like a little stack with like Badu, Candelario, and some of those guys, not a bad look at his price point uh, against Cease at 4,100. Paven Smith mentioned him at 39. If you aren't using Martin Perez, at least Garcia at 38. Definitely checks the box. Uh, Ramel Tappy, if you're stacking Colorado's at 37. Joey Gallo at 36. Nice GPP play. Um, AJ Pollock's only 3,100 versus the lefty Lauer. Pollock cracks the lineup. Get on board. He uh, put up 17 points on Wednesday, two for three with a run. RBI walk, stolen base. He got it all done. He's got 17, 3, 13, 0, 18 over his last five games. 3,100 loves facing lefties. Pollock's a phenomenal value. And like we've talked about random value guys here and there. Pollock's a legit value at 3,100 bucks, like a very good one at 3,100 bucks. Um, if you're fading Bauer, Avisel Garcia, 3K, not a bad look there. Um, and check the the Red Sox lineups so with some cheap outfielders they have that we'll see who's playing. Robbie Gross been only twenty eight hundred bucks for Steel and Cease could be very, very nice. Again, these Tigers plays could be much different if Rodon's on the mound than Dylan Cease. But we're we're gonna play it like it's Cease again. Slack chat chatted up there if things change. Uh, JBJ is only twenty five versus Bauer. Not a bad value play in that one. See if Dalton Varsho cracks the line. He got called up for Arizona with the recent IL stint for Cole Calhoun. He's 2,500. Uh, Andrew Vaughn's only 24 versus Boyd. Eventually, man, he's got to hit, right? He's got to hit. So that's an interesting GPP angle 
at 2,400 with Vaughn. So lots of ways to go in the outfield per usual. So recapping your pitching, Trevor Bauer, you're just going to play him in cash. Don't worry about it. I almost feel like just play him in a GPP too, just because the floor he brings to the table is ridiculous. Uh, get different elsewhere. So Bauer's my guy. We hope Rodon's going to be playing, but we'll see. So Bauer for sure. And then down down lower, you could go Cease in a tournament play. I think Alzale is a very nice GPP play against Atlanta because everyone's going to be riding that hot Atlanta bats. Uh, Kyle Gibson's a really good play, but I hope he's chalk so I can play Boston bats. And then if you need to absolutely punt, see what Arizona and Texas lineups look like, and maybe Sensatello or Perez can crack the mold. But for the most part, it's like Bauer and Cease or Bauer and Alzale is kind of where I'm looking, which tells you just how much fun this slate is. If you're stacking up, Texas is in play, Arizona's in play. The Dodgers are going to be uber chalk, but I love them. Kind of want to play some Boston. Uh, Detroit, if Cease is on the mound, don't mind that at all. Uh, Chicago, I want to see what lineup they put out. They just put out such dog poop lineups. And I really like Colorado and Chicago. So it's, it's pretty much every pit, every team, but like two. I think Chicago and Boyd is a very, very good one. Um, the Dodgers, those are probably my two favorites, but you can save money with Detroit. You can save money with some Boston players. We mentioned, um, and then some of those Arizona and Texas guys to save as well. So lots and lots of ways to go. I, I pretty much like, like scattered all over this thing. I need to see lineups because I need to see which values I'm using to go with Trevor Bauer and company. It's a FanDuel slate. Like I said, you can just plug Trevor Bauer in for like the 12,000 plus that he is. Take some values at a few other spots, stack up elsewhere. It's great for a one pitcher site, two pitcher sites. This one sucks. It really does. It's tricky. So take it easy. Enjoy the draft. Enjoy some family time, whatever works for you. But I'll be back with you guys on Friday. So check me out on Twitter at BD Entrick. If you want to get the Slack chat, just let me know. We'll get you over there. Um, if you can rate and review the podcast on iTunes, I'd really appreciate it. Go check out the rest of my work. Benched with Bubba, always pressing PGA DFS podcast. Written work at fantasydegens.com and rotoballer.com. And check out the Rotoballer YouTube page to watch this wonderful podcast. Unsubscribe, like, and share all that good stuff. But for now, MLB DFS Quick Hits, your win Thursday, April 29th edition in the books. I'm out.